Dream Scenario is a movie that is out in theaters and it stars Nick Cage. Now, this is someone who I really respect because of the bold choices that he makes as an actor. You know, not everything that he does is a hit, but when it works, it works really well. And I'd seen the trailer for this movie, and I was really, really intrigued. Basically, Nick Cage plays this sort of um, everyman type of person that, uh, you know, isn't really extraordinary. Um, and all of a sudden, one day, people start dream dreaming about him. And it's people that he doesn't necessarily know. It just becomes this, like, almost like a virus that just spreads and spreads, and everyone's having a dream about him. And, you know, that's kind of the premise, and... You know, uh, what does that mean, of course, right? That, that, that's like raised as a question. And, uh, what does that mean specifically for him as he's like essentially becoming famous, even though people don't know him? Uh, you know, this kind of parasocial, um, aspect or they think they know him and so forth. So the, the trailer is very fascinating. And I have to say, as a movie, I was really hooked for much of the movie. It, it was, uh, very engaging. Um, it went from this kind of lighthearted fun to, you know, really tightening the bolt, um, so to speak. And it got kind of, um, you know, the harsher realities of dealing with fame and so forth. And then I would say about three fourths into the movie, something happens and it just goes off the rails for me, which is unfortunate, you know, um, by the end, it just kind of lost sight of what it was trying to do. And, you know, it, it just almost said to itself, like, hey, I have other ideas that could that I want to fit in with this narrative. So let me just, start, you know, I haven't gotten a chance to, like, play with them yet. So let me kind of throw this stuff in here. And by the end, like, yes, it makes sense. But I think it just goes too far off the rails. And thematically, it ends where I always thought it would, or at least as far as, like, what it was trying to really address. But it does so in such a convoluted and messy way that, you know, uh, I don't know. I, I left with a weird feeling, not, like not satisfied by the end, you know, but I have to say everything that came before it was really so well done. And that, that's the biggest shame for me is that it had such high promise and it just didn't live up to it in the, that final, you know, 25% of the movie, which is um, rather unfortunate. Um, it does have 97 percent on Rotten Tomatoes, which is why I was like, oh, okay, yeah, let's definitely check this out. You know, I like the trailer. It's It's got these high ratings. Um, but, you know, so for me, overall, a mixed bag. If you like Ari Aster, he is a producer, and, um, you know, the, the ending particularly is evident of, like, you know, <laughs> essentially that, uh, that, you know, why it goes the way it goes, right? Um, he's kind of it's got that Ari Aster influence to it. Um, one of the, one of the things as a positive, I will say, um, I really appreciate, right. Um, you kind of see the different dream scenarios. Yes. Pun intended. Cause that's the title of the movie, um, of, of these people, you know, dreaming about Nick Cage. And what's fun is, you know, how sometimes you get faked out within these types of movies of like, what's real, what's a dream. Right. And it tries to play with that. Um, I appreciated the filmic language that you always knew, uh, at least I did, of like, okay, what is real and what is not. Um, so I really appreciated that, that um, just through its visual language, it didn't have to like spell it out for you, but it was just so easy to grasp. Um, so yeah, overall mixed bag for me, you know, can't outright recommend it, but there, there is a lot of redeeming stuff in that you know, certainly earlier parts, second half and so forth, just not by the end. Um, but if you do check it out, let me know what your thoughts on it are as I'm very curious.